Well, last week, a Liberal MP rose in the House of Commons to issue a call to action on behalf of Indigenous women facing violence. Well, that was not the first time that that's happened in the House, but what was different this time was that Robert Falcon Ouellet gave his speech entirely in Cree. He then provided the English translation himself, which is something he says he shouldn't have to do. More than 200,000 Canadians speak an Indigenous language regularly at home, and Robert Falcon Ouellet is joining us this morning from Ottawa. Good morning to you. Good morning, Tansé, uh, Anne-Marie. And uh, it's a beautiful day here in Ottawa, but not as nice as it is in Winnipeg. Oh, I bet. All right, give us, a, give us the story behind this. See, obviously, a very conscious decision on your part to deliver this speech first in Cree. What are you, what are you trying to say by doing that? Well, really, I wanted to demonstrate a certain uh, two young people, Indigenous people, uh, especially our young people, that uh, our Indigenous languages are still important, that they can be used in uh, our most symbolic places like Parliament. And I also wanted uh, to uh, cut through some of the noise because we often, a lot of young people hear the message that we shouldn't have violence against uh, uh, women. Um, and unfortunately, it seems that uh, in, in just, for instance, in the last month, there were two incidences where people made videos of extreme violence where one woman was beaten to death, a young woman, and another was essentially burned to the third degree uh, by some, some young men. And people videotaped it. Instead of helping and trying to stop these aggressions, people you know, stood by and, and, and watched and recorded it. And they felt they had such impunity that they could continue doing this. And so um, for me, it was important to raise this issue in the House, but also to say in our traditional languages, in this case, Cree, Nehio, uh, that um, you know, this is not something which is traditional. This is not how we're supposed to act. And we have certain values. And uh, they should conform to those values. One of, the, one of the points that came out of your speech uh, and the fact that you did do the translation is that we have th hundreds of thousands of people who speak Aboriginal languages in this country. Right now, they are not considered part of our official languages of English and French. Uh, you want to see uh, translators there on Parliament Hill because you do believe that this is part of our original fabric in this country. Well, uh, actually, I believe it's actually... Um under Section 35 of the Constitution, uh, Aboriginal rights are actually reaffirmed. And so what makes up Aboriginal rights? And I think the Supreme Court in a number of cases in Vanderpreet or in uh, highlighted that in Aboriginal languages are part an integral part of the culture and Indigenous law. And uh, related to that is if we have language and it's an important component to a culture, and then there's also other rulings in 1999, the Supreme Court ruled on Bolac uh, versus Canada, about how uh, language rights shouldn't be seen as negative rights, but as positive rights, which need the active support of the state. In this case, they were talking about French minority rights. And if uh, indigenous languages are protected under the Constitution, and language rights uh, should have uh, some form of support in the state so that people can participate fully in their country, then in this case, what I'm asking is when I stand up to speak in the parliament on those occasions and I decide to speak in an indigenous language, I would like the opportunity that my fellow parliamentarians can follow the debate, understand what I was saying, because it was interesting I was speaking but no one in the house could actually understand what I was saying. So people, uh, some people were laughing, even though it was a very serious subject. Mm. Uh, some became very serious as well, trying to listen and, and be considerate. Um, but it, it, it was an unfortunate way, even though I provided a, a translation uh, 48 hours in advance and I'd requested it. And unfortunately, the, the House of Commons uh, translation services said they couldn't do it. And so at some point uh, within the next week, I'm going to, uh, I've been working with some um, experts and legal experts in this issue about language rights. And I'm going to be making a point of order to the Speaker of the House of Commons asking for not only clarification, right but my uh, rights as a parliamentarian to participate fully in debate. And it's not to uh, take away from others, uh, English speakers or French uh, Canadians, it's to add uh, to the social fabric of what makes this country truly great, to add to its diversity. To make this, I want to share with our viewers uh, a point a, about parliament, diversity. truly symbolic place. Let's take a look at the numbers because we did put some of them together just to give people an idea of just of, of how many uh, Aboriginal speakers there are in this country. So right now it lists at 210,000. This is according to the census. But you say that number is actually lower of a representation than it should be. And that has to do yeah. with what? 
Well, I think there's a lot of uh, indigenous people out there who um, would like to speak their language, who, or when the census comes around, they mark down that it is uh, part of their culture and they mark down it's their mother tongue, yet they might not speak it as well as they should or could. Uh, because we've had a lot of state programs where, or you know, for instance, residential schools, where this was really suppressed in a lot of indigenous uh, uh, nations, uh, cultures, right across Canada. And so I think there's a lot of people who feel uh, pride about being indigenous uh, and, and would like to speak their language. And so they want to mark that pride down in the census. And so they put down they actually do speak it. And that's, that's my feeling on, on what actually occurs. Um, but at the end of the day, what I'm really asking for is, is in our most symbolic places like Parliament, that Indigenous young people, uh, all Indigenous people, can see uh, that their languages and their culture is important, that it's not at the exterior or the edges of Canada, but it's central to the makeup of what makes this country truly great, uh, our leader around the world. And, uh, and so this is why I'm trying to use this language, trying to advance this debate a little bit, because if we don't use these languages, if they're not used in Parliament, at some point most of them are going to die out. Even Cree, which is probably one of the largest uh, group or largest uh, used languages or greatest used language in, in Canada right now, uh, is declining. And I was speaking with uh, one of the elders of my family uh, a few years back before he passed away, and he thought within about uh, about 40 years and Cree might actually almost be close to extinction. Mm. Uh, and when I was traveling around in First Nation communities, right. some of the communities where you think the language is very strong, in fact, is actually quite weak. Only 25% of the people actually speak it fluently. Uh, and it took, and it took, took <laughs> the Inuit language, and it took, they took, excuse mm -hmm. me, uh, to the Inuit people, but that's a language which might survive long term, but even then uh, they're having grave difficulties. And so, for instance, in the Northwest Territories, there's nine officially recognized languages, including uh, many indigenous languages, and I think I think this is something that the Canadian Parliament should be trying to support, because if, if we Falcon can't do it in Parliament, Yes. I'm going to have to stop you there because we are out of time, but it is an interesting debate. It is an important discussion to have in this country. We want to thank you for bringing it to us. Well, that way, uh, thank you very much.